Hi, so um, I'm going to explain my last client that I had today for the week. She's my final client for the week. Um, I always make her, like when she wants to come in, I ask her to take the Saturday afternoon appointment. Because, well, it's kind of interesting. You would think I would want to spend less time with her because she is very annoying. Like, let me give you an example. Well, she's a Jehovah's Witness, so let's let's get that right out of the way. She, like, she was friends with my older sister when my mom converted. And so what happens with Jehovah's Witnesses is you get love-bombed. Like, you wouldn't believe when you are becoming a Jehovah's Witness. So, you know, my mom, my single mom, became a Jehovah's Witness. And my grandparents actually are the ones who went to her door to study the Bible with her. And then everyone has told me it's been, it was like an arranged marriage between her and my dad, kind of. Like, no joke. And they did stay married. So, I will say that. Um, but, uh, my mom was totally love-bombed. And I think for someone who had, had never really had, like, a lot of family-type love growing up, that love-bombing probably was like crack and um crack is a word I might say a lot in this video and then my sister Sarah I think she was probably like five or six and she got love bombed and my brother Clint um I don't know how old I, I don't know how old they were but they were old enough to you know go from not being a Jehovah's Witness to a Jehovah's Witness while they weren't babies. Um, anyway, so my sister had kind of more connection with witnesses because I was born into it, and so there was no need to love bomb me. So we've had different experiences going through Jehovah's Witness. Um, so this lady, my last client today... She has been friends with my sister for a long time. And, like, she's the type that really took my sister in. And so did her and so did her whole family. So my sister, like, went on trips sometimes with them and stuff like that. They taught my sister how to ski. Stuff like that. But I was never, ever close with them at all. Not until I started doing care. So, <laughs> my sister today actually came back while this lady was processing and said, oh my god, she's like a boomer on crack. And she is like a boomer on crack. And I told my sister this. She's a Jehovah's Witness and a feminist. Like, she's a boomer on crack. And my sister laughed and was like, oh my god, I never thought of it like that. So she's a man-hater. She's uh, had four daughters that she raised. Um, she has pretty, like, conventional, modern feminist thinking. Um, and she's a Jehovah's Witness, like a pretty, like, like devout one. So, like, goes door to door and everything. So, she really is a boomer on crack. Um, and you would think I didn't, I wouldn't want to spend that much time with her because she's so annoying about her hair. Because here's something about feminists and also Jehovah's Witnesses. So you combine this, can you even imagine? But because they have such radical thoughts and want to be heard so much, they act kind of superior about everything. Like, this woman dresses, she dresses really cute. She has really good style. And she picks out pretty cool stuff for her hair. Um, so that's partly the reason why I take her on, I guess. But um, mainly the reason why I take her on, well, let me just finish why you wouldn't think I would want her. Because I just want you to know how annoying she is, okay? Her sister has passed away. She died, uh, she died at only my age, 42, of cancer. So that is really sad. Um, but her sister, I guess, was a hairstylist right out of high school. And, I mean, I this woman's stories, I'm sure, are all so exaggerated. I guess her sister was, like, some kind of genius at doing hair or something because when she came out to California, the Dal Sassoon took her under his wing. 
but she didn't end up doing care for that long because she decided to pioneer as a witness, which is going out in service, like, um, I forget how many hours, like 80 hours a month or something like that. So yeah, even though she was a genius, she decided to preach full time. Um, and just raw talent. I was told today that, you know, some people have to learn things and some people are just gifted. So she was in that boat. Um, and so, of course, this lady who, um, she, she does like, like good things, but the thing is, is she, her hair is, she has amazing hair too. She has thick hair. It's dark. It's like a slate level five, but she likes it really blonde. And, um, you know, that's something that every stylist is going to approach a little bit differently. Um, my personal choice in this situation is to foil with bleach with 20 volume and just let it hang out for a long time. Just let it ride. And so that's one reason she gets the last appointment of the week. But a lot of stylists are going to go higher with the developer or go under the dryer. And I don't choose those things because I feel like you actually can get a lighter result with using a lower developer because you're letting that cuticle open up a little less aggressively and you're able to leave it on there and let get more pigment escape the hair while it's not breaking. Um, and then the dryer, I just feel like, damages the hair so fucking bad, and why do that? So anyway, with me, even though I've been able to get her hair shiny and length on it while bleaching it, she still always has to tell me that her sister is a genius for some reason. But that's just because her positions in life make her have to feel superior in every way. So, like today, I was like, this has been a long winter, and she was like, no, it hasn't. It's only had, we've only had one frost, which I don't fucking, she just has to, like, correct me on everything, everything. And, um, which, whatever, I don't care. I, I take her on, so that's just how annoying she is. So you would think, why encourage this? And the reason why I do encourage it is because I, she's kind of like a rebel for coming to me, because... You know, like I have a picture of Santa at my station, you know, like I'm pretty worldly and uh, she keeps coming back. Although the picture of Santa does make her have to feel the need to preach a little bit more. But um, I just feel like since she's kind of a rebel and comes to see me, I just want to make her, make her hair cuter than everybody else's. Just I just feel like I should reward her for that. So I, I deal with her. And it's not the worst because I actually end up liking a lot of the stuff I do with her hair. But she'll always come back and be like, you need to get these, um, the foils close to my scalp because my hair is black when it, grow when it grows in. And I'm like, well, you wait too long. She, she goes 10 weeks. But in between her bright blonde hair, it's like, yeah, your hair's going to fucking look black because, you know... It's bleached really well, and your hair's really dark. Anyway, she's annoying. And she's never that nice or anything like that. And her hair always looks super cute. So, anyway, that's just, that that's a typical trait of witnesses. They just, they can't be impressed with anything. They've got all the answers for everything. So, anyway, today, you know, she was lightly throwing in Jehovah's Witness preaching she was bringing it up a little more than usual, but they just got new information yesterday. The governing body told everybody that women are allowed to wear slacks to the kingdom hall. And it was kind of cool to be able to actually talk to a true believer and get their interpretation of this new light that they got that women can wear pants to the kingdom hall, which actually I don't necessarily even agree with. Like, my sister sent that to me last night, so I already knew about it. Um, and I straight up told my sister, we can't tell Pepper. Because the memorial is the one place she knows she has to wear a dress. And I just think it's good practice, so we can't tell her that. It's got to be a dress. 
So I, I guess in this case, I'm being the watchtower. No dresses at the Kingdom Hall, or no pants at the Kingdom Hall for girls. Only dresses. Um, so I don't agree with this rule. But this lady, and also they're like, not this, recently, men are allowed to wear beards. So th this is like fucking, this is like huge on a uh, witness new light. This is, this is like the biggest news in my lifetime, actually, I think, with the organization. It's a huge advancement for them. And so her take on it, and this probably won't, I probably can't really explain it very well. And you, it's probably one of those things in life where you'd actually have to experience being a part of it to really get this. But she was just kind of emphatically telling me that the organization knows things that we don't know. And so, you know, we don't know why they make these calls, but it's for a reason. And one day we'll probably know what that reason is. <laughs> to wear pants. Like there's, there's some apocalyptic reason why they got announced that this is the case. And it's just, it's so interesting how much this is a symbol to them of some revelation or something like that. And um, they are getting very um, doom and gloom recently. Um, yeah, so, but, but I guess to keep everyone happy, they get to wear pants and grow beards. Um, but they're just going to fit in a little bit more, and I kind of liked it when they really stood out. Um, I thought they looked cute, all witnessy, but yeah, from the outsider's perspective, it's pretty obvious they just don't want to look like weirdos, and they're not going to attract people if they look like weirdos, but I didn't think they looked like weirdos. I thought they looked kind of cute. They'll still stand out, though, because I'm sure they're still going to have, like, weird Christian standards for everything, so. But I don't know. They're like really letting their hair down these days. Anyway, gonna pick up my cousin tonight from the train station and have a fun weekend with my family.